Hey all, it's been a 007 and it kind of seems fitting that around a year of the anniversary of Donald Trump being the US president, I'm here to talk to you about a documentary that covers the final year of President Barack Obama in office. It's directed by Greg Barker. I saw it last October at the London Film Festival and it's released in the US and UK today. So It's called The Final Year, and that's exactly what it is. It's Greg following Obama and a team of his people as they really try and create the legacy of Obama's administration. And I think it's very clear that they believe they're going to be handing over to Hillary Clinton. And there are a set of beliefs that they embody, uh, some of which I share, some of which I don't. But what does impress you is their earnestness their commitment to the concept of public service, that they are putting their lives in service of what they believe are the best interests of the United States, and that that is a very liberal internationalist view. In other words, they believe in engaging with foreign powers and in using America's reputation and history as a democracy and embodying certain idealized values into practice, into using that influence abroad. So it's a film that very much comes from a pro-Obama perspective and I think is as fascinating for what it doesn't say as what it does say. So the film follows a couple of specific people and it's kind of, I guess, sad with the benefit of hindsight regardless of your views of what they're trying to achieve to see how quickly in politics your achievements can be undone. The first of these is Secretary of State John Kerry, who was negotiating the nuclear deal with Iran, which as we know now is is irrelevant. He follows UN Ambassador Samantha Power, and she's basically in Nigeria trying to get the girls kidnapped by, by Boko Haram back. And that's interesting because she totally believes in the civilizing mission of the United Nations. And as we know, that's very different from uh, Donald Trump's views. The film also follows Ben Rhodes, who's the deputy national security advisor. And he was basically trying to do two things. He was trying to reconcile with Cuba and keep climate change at the top of the agenda. And as we now know, uh, the US has withdrawn from the Paris Climate Change Accord, so that's done. And then finally, it's meant to be following Susan Rice, who was director of the NSA. And I think she might have been the most fascinating to really get an insight into, because obviously it's a secret world, one of national security. The problem is, is that she basically only gets a couple of scenes and just provides a couple of quite banal sound bites. She doesn't show her personal life as the other people do and comes across as very deliberately, I think, anonymous, which is probably why there wasn't very much usable material. I do somehow wonder why she volunteered for the documentary, given that she wasn't prepared to give much of herself to it. And I do wonder whether the director might have been better to cut her out entirely. That said, I do have a sneaking suspicion, and I've got no foundation for this, that maybe it's that... Susan Rice, coming from the NSA, would have been more of a foreign policy realist with a capital R, a philosophy in opposition to being an internationalist, capital I. And maybe what she was saying might not have jived with certainly the Samantha Power part of the film. And I wonder if that brought editorial conflict or problems. So I think this documentary is fascinating and it's it's insightful as far as it goes. I think it will very much appeal to the people who share the same value set as the people it's it's eulogizing effectively. I don't necessarily do that. So I found it more fascinating for what it didn't show. In other words, this is a group of people and an administration in its final year that seems incredibly complacent, incredibly out of touch and in its own Washington bubble. And it exactly tells you what the Trump campaign was fighting against and why people in opposition to Trump were so surprised by his victory. Because there is so little acknowledgement of the juggernaut of the campaign of, oh my goodness, this guy has now won the primaries. You know, he is the candidate. This is who Hillary is going to have to go up against. It's almost like it's too outlandish a concept for people who've dedicated their lives to public service to take seriously. They literally can't compute it and therefore they ignore it. And I'm not trying to blame these three people specifically because I think the same was true of many of us. You know, I remember when he first ran for, was running in the primaries, 
thinking it was outlandish, but you have to change as the evidence changes. And I think that watching this movie was therefore bittersweet for me, not necessarily because I regretted the Obama presidency as much as some of his real super fans watching this will, but because it showed me some of my mistakes in that final year and some of the mistakes we all made in underestimating the Trump phenomenon. That's the real tragedy of this for me. So there you have it, The Final Year, a film about three people trying to craft a legacy that was effectively undone by Donald Trump within weeks. It's very sad and very ironic that I think the message of this film is trying to say these are values that are worthy and don't be discouraged, don't be disheartened, be inspired by these people, enter public service, do right by your country. And yet the message I took from it with the benefit of historical hindsight is how fragile those legacies are. So it's a documentary that I will still recommend. I think it works on many levels and I think it can work for you even if you're not a huge fan of Obama. I really would encourage you to see it regardless. Apart from anything, it does show you a little bit of the machinery of government and I think that's always fascinating and interesting. So the film has a running time of 89 minutes. It's rated 12A for infrequent strong language. It played the BFI London Film Festival in Toronto last year, and it's released today in the USA, UK and Ireland. I hope you watch it. I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to leave a comment here or at the blog at beena007.com. Thank you for listening.